So we have here five different 50 millimeter lenses and one camera, the Ronin 4D 8K. Now, these lenses are all 50 millimeter, like I said, and each of them have a special thing about them. Now, I'm gonna start with the first one. This one is the Sony G Master 50 millimeter f 1.2. This lens is absolutely insane. Whenever I put it on like Sony FX3 or FX6, it produces amazing, beautiful images. But the only thing with this lens is that it's extremely clean. Now, that's why we're gonna go to the next one, which is a vintage Minolta lens. This lens is fully manual. You have to manual focus it or use a LiDAR system. And the beauty with this lens is that it's old and it has a lot of character as opposed to the 50 millimeter that we have here. And it's gonna be very interesting to see the differences between these two. Now we're going to a rehoused vintage lens from Iron Glass. This one is the famous Helios 44.2. I think the most famous vintage lens on the market, but this one is molded to have an anamorphic bokeh. And down here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see, it has an anamorphic uh, bokeh installed. And this lens is absolutely insane. I really love it. And I cannot wait to see how it performs against the others. Now we're moving to the next, which is an anamorphic lens. This one is a 1.6 squeeze anamorphic lens from Siri. It's extremely small and lightweight, and it's one of their latest lenses. This 50 millimeter T2.9 is absolutely beautiful. I used it a couple of times and uh, I really love it. And I'm also, again, really curious to see how it compares with the others. And moving on to a very weird and huge lens. This one is a 50 millimeter T2.9 anamorphic lens with a 1.8 squeeze. This one is the most uh, squeezed anamorphic lens we have in this test. I wish we had a 2x squeeze anamorphic to see how it compares. Um, but this one, the only downside with this is that it's not a constant squeeze as you focus. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky to uh, judge, but these are all the lenses that we're gonna test out today on a single camera, the Ronin 4D 8K. Now let the test begin and see which lens looks better. All right, so as you can see right now, we're filming on the 50 millimeter F 1.2 from Sony and the image looks absolutely insane. We're also using the autofocus from the LiDAR. So uh, this is like a normal sharpness test and a quality test. And after that, we're gonna do a flare test and see how it looks. So as you can see, the flare is pretty well controlled and it's nothing crazy going on. And we're also gonna do a focus breathing test. This lens has a little bit of focus breathing, but not too crazy. Right, and this is the minimal focus distance. As you can see, it's pretty close and the bokeh in the background looks absolutely amazing. All right, so now I switch to the Minolta lens. This one is a 1.4 lens and I had to mount the focus motor on the Ronin 4D 8K because this lens is fully manual and it requires a focus motor. Whenever you use an autofocus lens like a Sony G Master, you don't need the focus motor because it takes away the information through the pins. So this is how the image looks. As you can see, it's a little bit different. I feel like there were was more separation with the 50 millimeter f 1.2 than this one and it had more color this one is a little bit more neutral if you look at the skin tone now we're going to do the flaring and see how it looks as you can see the flaring is more uh crazy we have more texture in the flares and it looks a little bit different and now let's see if this lens has breeding or not as you can see, it has a lot of breathing, but it's not that bad. And let's see the close focusing. So this is the close focus. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, on the 50 millimeter F 1.2 was better, but it's pretty good on this one as well. So not bad. 
Moving on to the next lens. Now we switch to the 44-2 Heliest Rehouse by Iron Glass. And as you can see, the image looks uh, way different than it looked on our previous two lenses. But one of the key differences that you might see with this lens is that more of our subject is in focus than with the previous ones. Even though this one is a T2 and from T1.4 to a T2, there's not a big difference. But because we have that anamorphic bokeh going on, that actually makes the lens a little bit darker. So it's more like a T2.8 or T3 than rather a T2 because of the anamorphic bokeh installment. So uh, as you can see, the lens is pretty sharp. Uh, I pretty, I really like how it looks. Uh, I really use this lens quite a lot. Now let's see how it flares. As you can see, the flaring is really crazy. Like it's all over the place, but this is why you wanna use a lens like this because the flaring is crazy. And it also has anamorphic bokeh so you, you're kind of faking anamorphic but you're still getting that beautiful 16 by 9 aspect ratio now let's see if it has focus breeding or not and this one by far has the most focus breeding it looks like i'm zooming into the image which is kind of crazy all right let's see the minimal focus distance a little bit all right just a little bit all right so this is the minimal focus distance and as you can see it's pretty similar with the rest of the lenses so it's not bad at all all right so we are now on the Siri 50 millimeter t2.9 1.6 squeeze anamorphic and I feel like this lens is made specifically for this camera because the size fits perfect the Ronin 4D 8K and also the footage looks pretty good I also used this lens to test out this camera when it, when it came out and the footage looks really good especially if you film outside and you have a lot of textures now here in the studio it's not so obvious that we're filming anamorphic even though we have a lot of bokeh in the background but if you use anamorphic lenses outside you will see the difference now we're looking at the shot and i feel like it's pretty crispy looks nice and now let's see how it flares so as you can see, I have the neutral flaring going on. It's not the blue flare. I went for the neutral because I was curious how neutral flaring looks. And I think it looks pretty nice, even though the blue flares are the ones that I like the most. Let's see if it has focus breeding. The focus breeding is there, but it's not really bad. I mean, it's pretty okay. It's normal for an anamorphic lens to focus breed. Now let's see how close we can get to like the minimal focus distance. I think you need to go backwards a little bit. So as you can see, the close focus distance is not that great. It's only 0.9 meters, which in some cases that's sadly not enough. And I think this is one of the biggest drawbacks with these lenses is that they don't have a better close focus distance. But when we talk about anamorphic lenses, usually most anamorphic and affordable anamorphic lenses have a similar close focus distance. Some of them, which are more expensive, have 0.6, 0.5, but these ones are extremely expensive. Now, with Siri being an affordable anamorphic lens, I can totally understand that and it's totally fixable with some diopters. You buy some diopters, you put them in front of the lens and you have better close focus distance which i totally recommend because otherwise you're going to be limited to this close focus distance which like i said is not enough also here's a side by side with all of the four lenses we've tested so far and now the great joy with a 50 millimeter t2.9 1.8 squeeze and as you can see this lens squeezes the image quite a lot and we barely have image on the screen, especially on a 16 by nine sensor. As we can see, the image looks pretty good and uh, I really like what I see. Um, now we're gonna check out the flaring. Let's see how it flares. So we have that beautiful anamorphic flare that we all love and see in the movies. And I really like how it looks. 
Now let's see if this lens has focus breathing or not. And uh, the focus breathing is pretty controlled from what I see. It's not that bad. Now this is the closest you can get with anamorphic lenses, which is not bad, it's 0.7 meters, which is pretty good for an anamorphic lens. This is how most of anamorphic lenses are. Some of them have 0 0.4, 0 0.5, but these ones are way more expensive than what we have here. And now a side by side with all of the five lenses we've tested. Uh, it's really interesting to see that the Great Joy and Siri look almost identical, which is kind of odd because one is 1.8 squeeze and one is 1.6 squeeze. So that is quite interesting. But also we have more separation on the Great Joy. All right, so I'm really curious which lens is your favorite from this test. I really hope you enjoyed this short little test that we did in the studio. Obviously, it would have been much cooler to go outside and film in a real world situation so you can see a little bit of the textures and everything but currently it's minus 10 degrees outside and I don't want us to freeze to death. So you're gonna have to wait because I'm gonna repeat this test when it gets warmer outside. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and until next time, I'm Alexander Don and thanks a lot for watching.